Hi. Bite. <laughs> I'm not talking about that kind of bite, guys. Come on, get it together. Is that together. the bite of 87? <laughs> Stupid. I'm talking about a app called Byte. If you aren't familiar with what Byte even is, I can't blame you. Byte was a TikTok competitor app, kind of before TikTok really became as big as we knew it today. It came out in the beginning of 2020 and was co-founded by one of the co-founders of Vine and was initially teased as V2 or Vine2. It certainly didn't last long and I think I'm the only person who even knows what it is. But that won't stop me from telling you fuckers about it, dude. You're stuck here, press subscribe. Byte was basically a worse TikTok. I mean, I hate to say it, but you couldn't really add licensed music. The videos were shorter. There was way less options for editing. You can do the cool green screen shit that TikTok has. So if you ask me, it was kind of a failure from the jump. Just calling it the next Vine is clearly not enough for it to be able to succeed. Byte wasn't the next Vine. It was just another Vine, at least in terms of functionality. All the sources I find now say the videos have to be 16 seconds, but I swear when Byte initially came out, it was a lot shorter than that. But the overall concept is that you have to make short snappy videos with minimal video editing and barely any sound added in and boom there you go that's your vine that's your bite the problem was we've kind of moved past that format just as a collective internet especially with tiktok picking up as much speed as it was in the very beginning of the pandemic bite was so easily and so quickly forgotten that it was basically just another place for tiktokers to post their tiktoks bite very quickly fell by the wayside and a year after it came out it was bought by another tiktok competitor known as Clash, which I have not heard of at all. The two apps merged into one and now it's just called Clash and the branding is way worse and it has even less users now, so good move. Did Byte have its own potential? Yes. No. I don't know. It's hard to say because so many people were already on board with TikTok and it just had more tools, it had more features, and who's to say if Byte actually was competitive with those tools and features? Maybe? But on top of that, TikTok's branding is so much better. Every TikTok has the TikTok logo on it. It ends with a little splash screen saying, this was on TikTok. And the name is also better. One of the most jarring things about the switch from Byte to Clash is that it kind of just happened. Like nobody cared about either of these apps. So when they merged together, like nobody even knew it happened. And anyone who had Byte installed on their phone automatically had Clash installed instead. And I don't know about anyone else, but that shit freaks me out. Like the app that I thought would be there is no longer there. And now it's replaced by something completely different that does the same thing. I don't know. It feels like a, like a fucking, what's it called? A Mandarin effect. But as you may have already guessed, that is not where our video ends today. I want to take a look at Clash, see what it has to offer and frick around a little bit. Let's see what's changed from the bare bone days of bite to now where you're competing with one of the biggest video apps on the planet what does clash have to offer hello bite and to all the people on bite very excited to start my journey on this new app and very much looking forward to hello bite the first fucking thing i find is fucking cody ko saying hello bite from fucking two years ago what the fuck yeah, this is from January 25th, 2020. To give you an idea of how old my following page is, this is before the pandemic. <laughs> so when you first open Clash, God, that name is so bad. You aren't brought to a For You page, you're just brought to your following page, which I kind of like, but also none of the people that I'm following have posted in two years. So it's a little funny. Let's find some new content on here. Let's, let's see what we got. So, okay, there's a search page that's got uh a bunch of people on it who are these people good morning everyone happy wednesday my name is mrs wooly in fifth and i am going to be throwing my students a pizza party and i need your help so send me lots of fan mail and then i'm going to make some videos answering all of your most burning questions so make sure that you hit up my page send me some fan mail and i will be posting videos throughout the day i love you guys so so much bye that has 12 likes, and it was on the top of the Byte search page. Those kids get their pizza? Or meanest thing a student has ever said to me. So when you're first starting out teaching- Yo, who's asking these questions? I am looking through all of the videos. Oh my God, what the fuck? The person that asked that question works at Clash and does creator partnerships. And they're the only one in the comments. Okay, so the scariest drawing I've ever seen in class was um, a student that I had. Uh... Okay, another question that was asked by someone at Clash. And I can't figure out where these questions are coming from because 
all of the comments are blank and every post only has six likes on it. And this was at the top of the search page. What the fuck? As soon as I opened Clash to figure out what the fuck had replaced Byte on my phone, I noticed that I was automatically following a bunch of creators that I was not familiar with in the slightest. I guess when Clash took over Byte, they already had in mind certain creators they wanted to partner with and automatically followed users to those partners. And yet still my follow page has a two-year-old video from Cody Ko on it when the app was still called Byte. One of the creators I was automatically following is someone called Tris Stupid. Don't get me wrong, I don't have any problem with any of these creators. If they have a partnership with Clash, by all means, like, get your fucking clout. It really doesn't hurt anybody to be automatically followed. I just think from Clash's perspective, it's a little fucking weird. So let's watch some of his videos. Gabrielle Sinicola wants to know, what is the Next place that I'd love to travel to and why. Clash Fairy Godmother. Launch Czar. Another person who works for Clash? Do the only people that use this fucking app work for it? What is happening? Clash wants to know what's the worst date I've ever been on. D d d the fucking actual app account at this point. They're out of like workers and now they're just using the fucking apps account. What the fuck? Jean Castrillo asks, if I would like to either have a cheetah or a dolphin as a pet. The true fairy drop mother of Clash. And this person also asked a question on the teacher's Clash account. What have I stumbled onto? I never felt so alone, felt so alone, no, no. Okay, I found a video from Just Stupid that I thought was really funny. The people on this app are pretty funny, but what's really strange to me is that the two accounts that were promoted on the very top of the fucking search page were just answering questions asked by staff at Clash. And this leads me to my final point about Clash. The app is so focused on giving creators what they call fan mail, and they will even give you some to give to creators for free, and I guess that turns into money that they have. Kind of like how TikTok has the like gifting system that I also don't really understand how it works. In reality, it's just a way for creators to make a measly amount of money while a bigger corporation takes a larger cut than it deserves. Just like with TikTok. So you can see in the top right that I don't have any like Clash points right now, and I think if I click right here. See, I can give some fan mail. 150. 150 what? Express your support by sending drops and leaving a personalized message for this creator. Hi. Okay, I don't have any. So, 500 is $6. 5000 is $50. And they're all on sale. Because no one uses this app. To close out this video, I want to look at what I liked when this app was still called Byte and see where those creators might be now, either on TikTok or Twitter, or wherever I can find them. I'm literally trash. That was self-deprecating. Try saying this, I'm recycling, instead. One of the only creators I do actually remember from Byte is someone who just goes by the at Nina, at Wolverine on Twitter and Instagram. I really liked their stuff. Uh, they haven't posted since February of 2021 on this app and that makes sense. But let's take a look at one or two of their videos that I thought were funny. I feel like this was one of the most viral things that I saw on Byte, especially at first, and I'm only now realizing that it has 4,000 likes. <laughs> I went to Taco Bell, got some Cinnabon delights, dropped the bag, they roll under the seat. I don't have any delights. I have tragedies. Go follow Nina, they're super funny. They have a TikTok as well, and all the links will be in the description. No matter how many times you lose a pet to the hot car, it never gets easier. You'd think you'd get used to it, you'd never get used to it. Another creator that I followed at the time was at Ben Sees Things. I think his stuff was super funny as well. Sometimes I just be passed the fuck out at the crib because there's a carbon monoxide leak. And he also hasn't posted since August of 2020. Man, this app's doing good. <laughs> I think his at is at Ben Sees Things on Twitter as well. He only has like 255 followers. He doesn't link anything else, but uh, go follow him, I guess, if you want. A oh, beautiful day for a ride. On your lap! Oh my God. Lap! Beautiful day for a ride, huh? Share the road! Another creator I also thought was really funny at the time was at Kevin Saxby. You can follow him on Instagram and TikTok and hear some of his stuff. Hey man, pull my finger. Oh, God damn it. Come on, pull it. Well, that was anticlimactic. Take a What 
have you done? What have we done? He hasn't posted on Byte since August of 2020, big surprise, but he is on TikTok currently and actually has a Twitch as well. So follow him again, links in the description. But honestly, that's kind of it. Everyone else that I ended up watching on Byte were creators that I watched from other platforms like Abelina Sabrina, who has really great bites on here that I completely forgot about. So go follow everybody. The link's in the description. Do my bidding. <laughs> Overall, Byte is dead, was bought by Clash, and then died again. It's a really interesting story, but what I get from it at the end of the day is that corporations will come and go, but creators are what drive these things at the end of the day. And if you don't have a creator base, you don't have an app. TikTok is just TikTok, but the people on TikTok are what make the app good. And I wish more companies recognized this, and rather than coming up with really weird concepts like drops and fan mail just made it easier to make videos and spread them further. But for Clash, I think the book is already closed. The chapter's already over. Turn in the towel, as they say. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please click like or subscribe for more videos just like this every week. All the creators I did talk about are in the description. Feel free to go follow them. Make sure to shower at least once a day. Don't overcook your eggs and drink as much water as you physically can. Bye. Thank you so much to all my incredible patrons on Patreon. It's just $5 a month for all kinds of extra bonus content and you get your name in the end of the video just like this. Uh, the support means the world to me.